So, when opening a video about the Joker, there's a long list of memes to choose from. Yeah, we live in a society? If you just smile. I got this Joker poster at the theater a few weeks ago, but it was raining when I came outside, so it got all soaked, and then it was on my car floor for days, so... Despite the dorm room appeal, I don't think I'm gonna be hanging it up. I'm so confused about the controversy about this Joker movie, man. I feel like it just suddenly became a thing a couple months ago and like everybody had to have an opinion about it. But unlike lots of other controversial things, like I can't really tell where the party lines are. Like for instance, with other issues, if someone says Rey is a Mary Sue, there's a good chance they're right leaning. If they say she's an empowering female goddess, there's a good chance they're left leaning. And don't say stuff below about, oh, I'm liberal and I still think she's a Mary Sue. You get the point. Point being, with issues like that, the party lines are pretty clear. With this, I, I don't even know who thinks this movie is offensive and who doesn't. It's like, and I think everyone has a different reason for thinking it. One thing's for sure, if God forbid some terrible mass shooting does happen around this movie, it's not gonna be because of the movie. It's gonna be because the media perpetuated the idea constantly. I mean, seriously guys, the past two weeks, every boomer publication on the internet has been like, we don't want a mass shooting to happen, but if one did, the person who did it would get a lot of attention. So some people, mostly boomers, think the movie is gonna be offensive because it'll cause violence and whatever. But then other people think the movie is gonna be offensive because it like glorifies evil people or it, it makes you feel empathy for a villain. It all feels so manufactured and I'm pretty sure Warner Brothers is just celebrating the fact that it's controversial because it's gonna help it in the end. It gives it this victim complex of like, oh, the media tried to take us down, but we fight on. So I'm annoyed and deluded because going into the movie, I feel like I have to defend it to some extent from the people who think it's wrong to create empathy for a villain or it's gonna cause violence or whatever, but on the other hand, I don't even know if the movie's gonna be good enough to defend. And when the director keeps saying stupid things every other day, it feels even harder and harder to get on his side. But, um, after seeing the movie, my reaction is, really? This is the movie that caused a ruckus? I wasn't offended, but I sure rolled my eyes a lot. All right, so just to preface, this review is gonna be pretty negative. I didn't like the movie very much. Um, but as should be a given with any review, I don't expect you to agree with me, and I'm not saying you're wrong for enjoying it, and I'm not saying you're, like, problematic for enjoying it either. So I know not liking the movie, but also not finding it offensive may be a sort of weird hot take. Uh, so I'll start with the things that I did like, because the movie is not hot garbage or anything. It's just very mediocre or meaty joker. Lord, we're in for a long review. You might not have heard this take before. It's gonna be really spicy, but Joaquin Phoenix is good. You've heard it a million places, but Joaquin Phoenix is really great as the Joker. Um, you get a lot of secondhand embarrassment from watching him because he's a very socially unaware character and he's also mentally ill. And so he's constantly doing things that sort of embarrass himself in, from, in front of other people and um, make other people laugh at him unintentionally. But yet, with some characters, they might do that and not be aware of it. Like, they think everything's great and everybody loves them, but, you know, they're they're not aware that they're embarrassing themselves. Um, but the thing that makes him a little bit more heartbreaking to watch is that he's aware of it. He knows that he's embarrassing himself in front of all these people and that all these people are laughing at him behind his back and everything. But he can't control himself. And so he's simultaneously aware that the things he's doing are ridiculous, but he can't stop himself from doing them, which almost makes it more heart-wrenching to watch. Um, so I, I like that aspect of the character a lot. Also, obviously, like the physical appearance he nails, um, just the physique and everything of looking so skinny. I liked the very timeless visual aesthetic that the movie had. Um, it's supposed to be set in the 80s, much like Taxi Driver, which we'll get to, um, but it doesn't really firmly root itself in the 80s. It's got that as a basic framework, but you could say that it was set today and there wouldn't be a lot to contradict that, which I think is cool. Um, it really, to me, harkened back a lot to the Batman animated series, which also has a sort of fantastical, timeless comic book world, which feels a little bit like the 40s and a little bit like the 80s and a little bit like, like now, you know, which I thought was interesting to see a movie like that because 
with a movie like The Avengers, it feels like a very 2012 movie. But with this, I feel like you could watch it in 20 years from now and it wouldn't feel particularly dated because it doesn't date itself. On that note, um, I think the ties to the Batman canon and the allusions to the comic books were sort of what kept things interesting for me. Um, and I think subconsciously that's true for a lot of people, whether they admit it or not. <laughs> but you know, the idea that you're watching the Joker's definitive origin story makes it feel a little bit more poetic than it would otherwise as you sort of, you know, watch the puzzle pieces of him becoming the Joker fall into place and catch the hints of Batman to come. And that's really the dramatic question that kind of keeps the movie and the plot going beyond the simple character stuff. It's how is this gonna play into the Batman narrative and how is this Joker gonna become the Joker that we know? Batman is not in the movie, but I definitely thought it still reframed him as a character in an interesting way, even off screen, um, so that you really understood how to a guy on the street who's an ordinary guy like Arthur Fleck, like Batman could come across as this entitled rich boy who doesn't understand the real problems of Gotham. However, and I think this is the threshold where we cross from good to bad, uh, if, if we weren't watching a movie that was the Joker's real backstory and how he came to be, and this was just an ordinary story of some random guy going insane, I don't think anybody would care or praise the film that much because without those comic book ties to keep the story kind of going, it's a very derivative, very cliche, almost plagiarized at times movie that relies too much on the ties to comic canon to really be great on its own merits. I can't really say that I feel like the positive response and praise for this movie is a sign that the masses suddenly love complex character dramas because um, they don't see any other ones in theaters. I, I think really more than anything, most people just really like the Batman universe and all the iconography associated with it. The director has talked before about how this was his attempt to get a complex and personal character drama made under the disguise of a comic book film, um, which I thought was an interesting notion and for sure something that might be a template that could work in the future. But after seeing the movie, to me, it feels more like a comic book film made under the guise of a complex personal character drama because the comic stuff is the stuff that shines here and the character drama stuff is the stuff that feels derivative and cliche. Essentially the first hour and 45 minutes of the movie is a rinse and repeat cycle of Arthur does a thing, then he gets beaten up or hurt or trampled by society and then the movie expects us to feel bad for him and then he walks off in slow motion as dramatic music plays and you think, oh, this is the moment he really became the Joker, but then it happens another 10 times after that. And for a certain period of time, like that's fine. I was perfectly willing to tolerate a certain amount of screen time given to, you know, showing how society mistreats this guy and why he would want to become the Joker. That makes total sense. But that repeat cycle of buildup as Arthur is mistreated by society and then we're expected to care about him goes all the way through the first act and then through the second act and then bleeds into the third act. And as it goes on, the ways that he is hurt and mistreated become increasingly comical and just ridiculous and hard to accept. It's very clear that the writers have no idea how to make you care about this character other than to just throw things at him constantly and be like, see, he's hurt, he's a victim, you should care. You know, there, there's no compelling desire or drive to the plot. There's no ticking time bomb or anything. It's just a repeat cycle of bad things happening to a guy. And if this were like a documentary, I would be blown away. I would be so engaged because I'd be like, oh my gosh, this really happened? I can't believe so many bad things happened to this one guy. But being that it's fiction, as it keeps going on, you go, man, the writers really have one trick, don't they? <laughs> I felt like after he killed the guys on the train, like he could have become the Joker right then and there. It was enough justification. It was believable for me to think that he could become the Joker after that. But then the movie goes on another 45 minutes and we fade out and then fade back in with more and more episodes of him being trampled by society. The weird part is that as the movie goes on, it becomes more and more clear that the director sides with the Joker and he sees him as the hero in the scenario. Like. <laughs> You know, the whole thing is a string of episode after episode of seeing the world and why it sucks and why you should side with Arthur and why he's the hero and why he did what he did. 
And intellectually, of course, you can still always go well, but he kills people, so he's not the hero. But like emotionally, on an emotional level, and on what the movie asks you to care about, it wants you to see him as the hero. And in a weird way, I find that almost shallow. I mean, like, okay, so to make it clear, I don't have any problem with a movie that asks you to empathize with a villain. You know, like, some people see Infinity War and they say it's problematic because it asks you to understand where Thanos is coming from. Um, and I truly have no problem with that. I think the more that you get inside a villain's head, the better. The distinction for me is that... I think what a truly good and complex and nuanced movie should do is allow you to understand and empathize and get inside their head and feel your heart wrenched by a villain, but the movie should also take time to make you hate and disagree with them fundamentally. And that's the kind of contradictory feeling that a complex project and story should make you feel. Um, where on the one hand you're like, oh, but I care so much and I understand where they're coming from. But on the other hand, you're like, oh, but they're evil and I hate them. <laughs> and, and you feel those emotions both as equally strong. I think Infinity War and Thanos are only an okay example of that. Uh, a better example of it done right would probably be Killmonger and Black Panther. You know, that, that's a character where we, we hear a villain's pain, we understand his backstory, and our hearts really break for him, and we understand why he's doing what he's doing. Um, but we also fundamentally disagree with him and hate him, and he's doing terrible things that we cannot possibly condone. Um, so the movie really makes you wrestle with this idea that this terrible guy is doing terrible things for reasons that you totally understand, and that's nuance. I didn't really feel that same sense of nuance with Joker because the vast majority of the movie is spent trying to get you to empathize with him and trying to get you to feel his pain, but it very rarely, if ever, spends any time um, attempting to get you to hate him or understand why he's wrong about things. Obviously, he does terrible, terrible things throughout the movie that you should hate him for, but most of the runtime really just feels like justification for those things and showing you why it was okay for him to do them. Um, people will say that this is a movie about mental illness and about how we need to treat people like that better and all this kind of stuff, or it's a movie about the right, or it's a movie about the left, or it's a movie about society, you know. But I, I felt like it brought up all of those topics a lot, and it didn't have anything to say about them whatsoever. It, it said, hey, look, Mental illness, now you fill in your opinions about that yourself, you know? Hey look, billionaires, now you fill in your opinions about that yourself. Hey look, the poor and depressed, now you fill in your opinions about that yourself. But the movie really lets you fill in all of those blanks yourself. It doesn't take a stand in any regard, which I found a little bit cowardly. As far as the filmmaking goes, I kinda came down in the middle, you know? I enjoyed watching it, and the cinematography was really beautiful. Um, I enjoyed, once again, the, the timeless aesthetic that the whole film had. Um, and the score is great as well, it's really atmospheric. But it's hard to call a movie like this and the filmmaking in a movie like this truly original or revolutionary when it's so, so heavily inspired by Scorsese. And it's not inspired, it really just rips him off. I saw Patrick Willems' review of this and he said it reminded him of a feature-length version of one of those what if Wes Anderson directed X-Men YouTube sketches? And those were my thoughts exactly. It, it really feels like a pretty generic and cliche and derivative character drama in art film clothing. It pulls all of the tricks, like solid colored cursive title cards and off-center framing to convey distance and hard cuts to classical music and handheld long takes. But for me, because of that, it comes across as a very phony, cheap imitation of indie cinema for people who haven't seen the films that it's imitating. I don't wanna seem like gatekeepy with that. Like it's very easy to be the guy who's like, hey, well, if you liked this movie, then you must not have seen the much better movie that's imitating. Um, you know, I, I think there is value to some extent in a movie that brings a new genre to a new generation, you know? So like, 
Bumblebee is literally just the Iron Giant. But, like, to me, that's fine because there are kids who haven't seen the Iron Giant and now they're seeing that story in a new format. And that's that's great. For me, I guess the difference is, just in my own personal enjoyment, that the film came across as so full of itself and so pretentious and so self-important. And it's, you know, this is the first time this has ever been done in a comic book movie that, like... It's very clear that they have no interest in acknowledging the fact that they ripped it off almost entirely from Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. <laughs> Again, I, I want to acknowledge that I think there's a lot of good about the movie, and I understand that some people are experiencing this kind of thing for the first time, and I think there's a lot to enjoy. Um, for me, it did not land at all, <laughs> and that doesn't mean that I'm saying you're problematic for enjoying it or anything like that. Um, more than anything, I'm just sort of rolling my eyes at the whole thing, and I... I'm just sick of the controversy. I want to talk about other things. So that's my review. I don't know if anyone stuck with me this long. Um, ironically, this truly is the we live in a society of a movie. And it's really ironic because that term has been associated with the Joker since long before the film went into production. <laughs> but, you know, we live in a society is a term, a meme, that became ironic and funny because it seems like it has something important and deep to say but when you listen to it again, you go, wait, that's just an obvious fact that anyone could have said. I will say, like, to its credit, this movie will stick with me far longer than something like Captain Marvel or Ant-Man and the Wasp ever could. Um, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I am very glad that it has started the conversation again about more solo, director-driven, low-budget comic book films, which I would love to see more of. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I think I am glad it exists, and it will have more of a positive impact on the film world than a negative one. <laughs> Whether it will have more of a positive impact on the world at large, that remains to be seen. But, you know, for the time being, I think I'm glad it came out, and whether or not it landed for me, I'm glad other people are enjoying it. Um, more than anything, I'm just looking forward to never talking about it ever again. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I didn't even really care to make this video, but I felt like I kind of had to contribute to the conversation and the controversy, so you know how it is. <laughs> uh, really, more than anything, I just want to talk about theme parks all day. Like, you know, the Muppets got cut at the Magic Kingdom yesterday, and I'm very sad about that, but I guess I have to talk about the Joker. But anyway, I'm going full-time on YouTube this semester, and I've got a lot of big projects on the horizon. If you haven't checked out my recent Dark Crystal video, you should check that out, because I love that show so much, and I want more people to love it like I did. Um, but other than that, you know, you can leave your thoughts, positive or negative, about the movie in the comments below. This is one of the times when I'm very anxious to hear both sides of the coin, because, you know, I'm glad that it moved people, and I'm glad to hear people who agree with me also. <laughs> So yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.